Hey guys, this is AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is recovery bottles. So we're going over what to do with a new recovery bottle uh, before you put it into use. So we're going to be commissioning this. Uh, we're going to be going over how do you know if you have a full recovery bottle. Uh, we're going over how do you know what refrigerant's in the bottle. Say if this bottle is sitting at the shop and it has some refrigerant in it. We're going to show you how to determine which one's in it. Also, the communication uh, with you and the distributor in order to be able to exchange your bottles and also be able to uh, sell back the refrigerant. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get started. In reference to the new recovery bottles, uh, what you want to do in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, the, the distributor will only exchange their tanks for another one of their new tanks because the manufacturer that they're dealing with only wants to get their tanks back. All right, so uh, that's in most cases, like I said, not all, but most cases. So you want to make sure you are aware of what distributor you want to work with. Maybe, you know, the one that will pick the tanks up and drop them off for no charge, you know, and, and then end up paying you for the refrigerant and things like that. So you want to be smart about all that type of stuff. Um, and instead of just, you know, trying to get a deal on the recovery tanks, um, you want to line it all up with the distributor. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and suck this uh, down uh, to a 500 micron level, actually a little bit lower than that. But first, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and see if the manufacturer has nitrogen pressure in this or has sucked it down into a vacuum. So we don't know, so we need to go ahead and check that out first. So we're going to go ahead and check on that. So that it could be either way. It could be either way. So we're going to make sure this handle's shut, make sure that's all good. I'm going to open it up just a little bit in case it is full of pressure. It will go all the way over to here. I'm going to open it up a little bit and see if it's in negative inch HG in the vacuum or has pressure in it. Okay. This tank actually has nothing in it. Uh, so let's go ahead and we can just take this off. Feels like it's just a little bit, a little bit of negative pressure is what it feels like, not much. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up hooking our vacuum pump to this side. We're gonna put a micron gauge on this side and we're gonna go ahead and suck this down. So let me go ahead and set that up. So to make this simple, what we have is just this line connecting from the vacuum pump to the blue side right here, which will be the vapor. We're gonna go ahead and open that handle up all the way. You always wanna make sure if there is uh, nitrogen in this tank that you get rid of basically that and bring it back down to zero PSIG before hooking this up. If you're running a micron uh, gauge on this, uh, you don't necessarily need your uh, manifold set. All right, so all we have is just a yellow hose from here, from the vacuum pump to the recovery tank. We're gonna open that handle up. Then we're gonna end up coming from the red handle, which is a liquid, which is connected to a dip tube that comes almost all the way down to the bottom. We have that connected directly over to our vacuum gauge. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Now what I like to do is I like to leave at least one hose a little loose whenever I turn a vacuum pump on. So now that that's loose, I'll go ahead and turn this on. This red cap is off. This is uh, where basically the pump is pushing out any water vapor air that's pumping out of the system. I'm going to turn that on. Close that down. Both handles are open. And we're going to go ahead and pull that down. So right now, uh, it's just showing the bars, but it will drop down into maybe around 12,000 microns, and then it'll jump down 11,000, 10,000, and so on from there, and keep going down until it goes down to 500 microns. People have asked me, you know, about vacuum gauges and, and vacuum pumps. I've always used uh, JV for vacuum pumps. You, ha you, you happen to notice I, <laughs> I have a variety of manufacturers. So all the manufacturers are pretty good. I just happen to like certain versions for, for certain things. So the JV vacuum pumps seem to work real well. I've had this type of vacuum gauge uh, for uh, 11, 12 years. Worked very well for me. Um, you can run it through or tap one side and just use it as a single port. I used to attach it to the, to the back side right here. So we're just going to go ahead and let that thing eat for a little bit. So you see the vacuum is now going into the numbers here. It was 12,000, now it's 11,000. 
and then, then 10,000, so it's going to keep dropping from there. It'll take a little bit. Um, you can always speed this up if you had larger hoses, uh, but I want to let it let it uh, do it a little slowly, make sure it gets all the water vapor out. This is very important uh, to be doing this before you put any refrigerant in, because what happens is when you go to drop this refrigerant bottle off at the uh, distributor or have them pick it up, what they're going to do is they're going to be putting the refrigerant gauge on it to tell if, you know, number one, what refrigerant's in it, and number two, if it has any non-condensables, all right? So it's checking, they're checking to see if you have maybe a mix of refrigerants or if you have nitrogen or some other thing that they can't tell in there. Uh, whatever temperature the room is, okay, so if you let this bottle sit for about an hour or two, it's going to basically be absorbing the heat in the room. It's going to all be at the same temperature. Once it's at the same temperature, you can take a temperature reading in the inside of the, the shop or wherever you're at and then take a pressure reading. And that's what they're doing at the distributor. So if your pressure is higher than what the saturated temperature is, uh, then you have a problem. Then they're not going to want to pay you for, say, the, all the R22 that's in that bottle. And right now it's going for about $5 a pound. Uh, it could go for higher in some areas, lower in other areas. And I've even heard of supply houses, and <laughs> not only heard of, but we have some supply houses around here that want to charge you for, say, 34 or 38 pounds of R22 refrigerant. They want to charge you a 38-hour recovery bottle cleaning for it and not pay you for the refrigerant, which is ridiculous. So if you have a refrigerant bottle that has 34 pounds of R22 in it, you know, you're going to make about $170 off that. All right? So that's all you know, part of your, your income. You shouldn't be paying for that. So anyway, they're going to be checking this with their pressure temperature chart, so you just want to make sure that it's correct. Let's see if you can make that out right there. That says 1750 right now. Okay, so now it says 1700 microns, and we're going to continue to drop, which is good. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our uh, refrigerant gauge to just say you can just pick a side, but we're going to pick the, the blue side so it's just vapor. Okay, we, we don't want liquid having to get up into our uh, manifold, so we're just going to go ahead and put our blue hose on the blue side. And we're going to go ahead and take a temperature reading in the room. Right now it says it is 49 degrees in the room. Okay, 49 degrees. Alright, so hopefully you can see this. It says 81 PSIG there. You bring it in and it reads about 49 degrees saturated temperature for the green R22 saturated temperature ring. Okay, that means that liquid and vapor both exist at the same time in that bottle. And basically this pressure temperature is proving to you that R22 is the only gas that's in the bottle. So if there was other gases in there, or if there was R4 tonight mix, it would be higher. If you look at the saturated temperature of R4 tonight, it looks to be 23 degrees. And in the room right now, you see that the multimeter is reading roughly 49 degrees. So this pressure is proving that there's only R22 in that bottle. So the next thing that we want to look at is how much refrigerant can you put in the recovery tank? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over a little closer to you. Okay, so if you can make that out right there, it says T, or it'll say TW. In this case, it says T, it says 28.4 pounds. That is the tear weight of the recovery tank. I think this, this bottle's swaying back and forth just with the uh, vacuum pump running on the table here, but uh, 28.4 pounds, all right, and then you need to talk to your distributor in reference to how many pounds do they want in the tank. So uh, there's certain there's certain limits right there, but basically you want no more than 80% in the tank. So if it's a 50 pound bottle, you can only have 40 pounds in it. Uh, most distributors are going to want to have 38 pounds or less. And the distributor that I deal with for uh, exchanging recovery tanks wants 34 pounds. So they want no more than 34 pounds of refrigerant in a 50 pound recovery bottle. So in this case, 34 plus 28.4 equals 62.4 pounds of refrigerant total. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero the scale out, and then we're going to put this recovery bottle on, and we know that we can't have any more than 62.4, and we're going to see how many more pounds of refrigerant we're allowed to have in it. And then we'll also figure out how many pounds is actually in the tank. Okay, so we have our scale zeroed out. You see that we have the poundage right here, and it says 0 0.00, okay? What you could have it on is kilograms, or you could have pounds and ounces. What we're going to do is we're just going to have it on pounds, but we're going to have how many pounds point uh, something, because basically the tank said 28.4. Now we're going to go ahead and put our tank on and see how much refrigerant we have in there. And we're going to take the high number, so we're going to say 47.2 pounds of refrigerant. Okay, so what we have is 47.2 pounds minus the tear weight of 28.4. And that means that we have 18.8 pounds of refrigerant in the tank. If we were to take the tear weight plus the amount of refrigerant we're allowed in the tank, which would be 34 pounds, we're allowed to have a total weight of the tank and refrigerant right here of 62.4 pounds. Our actual weight... 47.2 pounds. So that means that we could put 15.2 pounds more in here. So that's how you do it. You want to make sure that you don't have any more than 80% capacity in the tank and most manufacturers and, and therefore distributors won't take anything higher than that and actually they're probably going to want a number that's lower than that. So if 80% of a 50 pound tank is 40 pounds and they're going to probably want 38 pounds or less. Like I said, my distributor wants about 30, well, they want 34 pounds on the button or less. Now, they'll, they'll take uh, maybe 10 pounds of refrigerant in the tank uh, in order to give you an exchange. So you want to check out with them what the bottom number is, too, because if you happen to be in the, in the area and they don't charge anything for you to swap out a tank, then you want to go ahead and maybe just do that real quick, okay? So then you can get your fresh recovery bottle and this way, when you have a fresh recovery bottle, you always have the uh, alternative of if you had to do a repair on a job, you can pull the refrigerant into the tank, and then you can put that refrigerant back into the system again when you're done, if it was good refrigerant. You are allowed by EPA standards to take refrigerant out of somebody's house and put it in the same person's house, or a different house that is the same owner, okay? So you're not allowed to take the refrigerant from, say, this tank from, from one person's house and put it into a different owner's house, all right? They don't want uh, the cross-contamination between systems with used refrigerants. That would, that's an EPA standard on that EPA 608 test, and therefore that's, a, that's part of that EPA 608 law. So this 18.8 pounds of refrigerant will end up netting us at the supply house $94. Alright, so $5 a pound times 18.8 pounds of refrigerant, that's going to end up equaling $94. With no exchange fee and no cleaning fee. Okay, so you want to check with your distributor for all those facts right before you even get started with uh, buying refrigerant bottles and exchanging with them. So we're down to 475 microns. So we're going to go ahead and shut the tank down and then turn off the vacuum pump. Alright, so we're at 485 microns and that is on the red side. Alright, so we already shut down the blue side. We we're just making sure our tank held. So we're just going to go ahead and shut that down now and we're good to go. Our tank is ready for use. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.